Hello everyone, my name is Jared Ainsworth, and in this video I'd just like to quickly go over my process for reclaiming used isopropyl alcohol after I've used it to post-process my uh, 3D resin prints. Uh, if you're doing a lot of resin printing, you'll probably find yourself going through a lot of alcohol like we have, uh, so this is a great way to get back a lot of the alcohol. What you end up with after it goes through the still is perfectly clear, just like brand new 100% IPA. Uh, so this has been working great, I definitely recommend it for anybody who wants to use it. Um, I did originally try one of these desktop stills uh, that are sold on Amazon. These came recommended from another uh, blog that I saw. Uh, I don't recommend them though. I found that the top, uh, it, it doesn't have a clamp to hold it on and the seal doesn't seal very tight. So I found that there was a lot of alcohol vapor coming out of the edges and I was losing a lot of my alcohol. Um, the thing also failed after just a couple days of use. Uh, after a couple days, it started getting an E1 error code. And when I contacted the manufacturer, they couldn't even tell me what that was. They just wanted me to send it back for a warranty replacement. So I don't recommend these. Um, it's really nice. It has great temperature control. And I'm sure it's fantastic for water, but it really didn't work out very well for me with the IPA. So I wouldn't use those. Um, I always do this outside. Uh, even though this new still is sealing nice and tight and I'm not noticing any vapor smell or any alcohol smell or anything when it's running, uh, I still recommend doing it outside and also keeping a fire extinguisher handy uh, just to be on the safe side. Okay, so the process I use is just a real simple three-step process. First, I cure the IPA in my curing bucket over here. Uh, so I take my old dirty IPA, drop it down into this bucket, which I've lined with some IR LEDs. Uh, I also line the whole inside with reflective tape. Uh, when I originally built this, I used a white bucket because I thought that would help reflect the light back in, but it turned out that a lot of the light was coming out through the sides, uh, so I ended up having to wrap the whole thing in black gaff tape, uh, as well as uh, coat the inside with silver uh, reflective tape. Uh, if I was going to do it again, I would recommend just getting a black bucket to start with and lining the whole inside with that reflective tape before you do the LEDs. So maybe one of these days I'll redo that with a black bucket. Yeah. Anyway, uh, once the IPA has been cured as much as possible, I usually leave it in here for at least a couple days, make sure everything's hardened as much as I can. Uh, then I'll run it through uh, just a real simple rough filtering using some paper towels and one of these filters. Uh, I, I, made my, uh, I made my funnel so that it screws onto the top of these bottles that I like to use, but I also have a couple versions that have a different size standard neck, so if you want to use my, my funnels, you can. Uh, and then I added this uh, snap-in uh, kind of rough filter thing. This allows the, the filtering to happen all around the edges instead of just right at the bottom. Uh, that way it filters through the alcohol a lot faster. So this guy just snaps right into my funnel designs and I'll have all this stuff on, up on Thingiverse along with the source file. So if anybody wants to tweak it as they need to, uh, feel free to do that. My funnels are really large and really thick. Uh, I like my stuff to be heavy duty so it'll last a long time, but that also means they take a long time to print. Uh, so if you want a smaller or thinner version, uh, there are other versions of these filters on Thingiverse that have these holes, perforation, perforations around the sides uh, to help the filtering process go faster. Uh, but I'll leave all my stuff up there, so if you want to take mine and tweak it, you're, you're welcome to do that. Uh, so this still that I use is one that I got off of Amazon for about 100 bucks. Uh, they do have a version that has the thumper tank, but you really don't need the thumper. I had that hooked up originally, but it just makes the process take longer, and it's really not needed for the size of purple alcohol. Uh, I, I guess it's good if you're making uh, moonshine or whiskey or something, but uh, for ice purple alcohol, just a single condenser is fine. Uh, I also don't have mine hooked up to the, the water circulation. Normally you hook a tap up to this and you know drain up to the bottom and you keep water flowing through there because the water will get pretty hot pretty fast. Uh, I've just filled mine up about halfway with water and then I put a bunch of ice in there and it seems to work great. Uh, once the ice melts, I'll pull the hose off, let it drain out a little bit, put some more ice in. Uh, on my next version, maybe I'll have a, another bucket with some ice water and actually have a pump you know, circulating like a uh, fish tank pump or something, but for now, this is working just fine. Uh, this hot plate that I got off Amazon, uh, it doesn't have the finest temperature control, uh, so I'm running this at 200 degrees Fahrenheit, which is like 93.3 uh, degrees Celsius, uh, which is hotter than you need to do the size of pro alcohol, uh, but it is working fine, so I'm not worrying too much about it. Uh, maybe if I was going to do it over again, I'd find a different hot plate that have finer temperature control. Anyway, this one's fine. Um, so yeah, once everything comes out, then it stills over here into uh, your bottle, and you end up with just nice just like brand new, uh, super clean IPA. Uh, once uh, we've boiled off all the IPA, you're gonna end up with some sludge down here in the bottom. Uh, I usually move that into a disposable bottle, let it sit out in the sun with a cap off for a few days to try to evaporate out any other liquids and harden as much as possible. Uh, and then I take that to the local, uh, Austin has a toxic waste uh, disposal place here that's free, you just have to get on their schedule. Uh, I'm sure that your city has some place that deals with toxic waste, so check out your local reg regulations and 
yeah, take your stuff there. I think that's pretty much it. Uh, the next step now, I know that this is working really great and I'm happy with my results. I'm probably gonna try to take everything and uh, consolidate it all onto a small rolling cart so it's easy to get in and out, uh, move around in and out of storage as I need to. Uh, but that'll be another video, I guess. So yeah, I think that's pretty much it. I hope you got some useful information and thanks for watching.